Hello, this is Tom Wright from Oxford in England with a message for the good people from Stony Brook Church in Ohio. I gather that this Lent you're planning on studying Paul's letter to the Philippians and I'm told that you're going to be using some of my own material in doing that study. I'm naturally delighted and I hope and pray that it goes really, really well. I've actually been doing quite a bit of work on Philippians myself recently for a larger project that I've been wanting to get back to for a long time. And as I've done that, it strikes me more and more that Philippians is all about the public life of the people of God. Yes, there's the private intimate life of their communion with Jesus and their fellowship with one another. But what Paul is really concerned about, as he says in the introduction to the great central section of the first two chapters, chapter 1, verse 27, is that your public life should match up to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as he spells that out, he has a, a wonderfully shaped passage from 127 through to 218, which is focused on that extraordinary poem about Jesus in chapter 2, verses 6 to 11. And what he's saying before that is that you must be united. And he's appealing for a rich kind of unity, which goes far beyond the casual unity that we often know in the Western churches. And then from chapter 2, verse 12, he's talking about holiness, unity and holiness holiness, which are very difficult in themselves and even harder when you put them together. The only way for a church to be like that in front of the watching world is if it's focused totally on Jesus and that story which Paul tells of how Jesus went to the cross, even the death of the cross, he says in chapter 2, verse 8. And then the rest of the letter unfolds from there. I think this is a word for our time. The watching world looks on at the church and says, what are these people all about? But if they were to see even a glimpse of the public life being shaped by the gospel of Jesus, Israel's Messiah, and the true Lord of the world, then they might perhaps want to think again. That's my hope and prayer for you and for anyone who studies this vital letter at this remarkable time. God be with you, and I hope you really enjoy it. Bye-bye.